In this video, we're talking about adding and subtracting fractions. The key to adding and subtracting fractions is going to be finding a common denominator. And what we mean by that is equal denominators. So in this first example, we have 1 third plus 1 half. So the denominator of this fraction is 3. The denominator of this fraction is 2. But we need the denominators to be the same in order to add the fractions together. Until the denominators are the same, we can't do that. So how do we go about finding a common denominator or how do we go about finding a denominator that's going to be equal? What we do is we look for the lowest common multiple of the two denominators. So again, our denominators are 3 and 2. We need to find the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2. When you have small numbers like this, finding the lowest common multiple is easiest to do by looking at the larger of the two numbers. So our numbers are 3 and 2. 3 is larger than 2, so we're going to look at 3. We're going to look at the multiples of 3. We're looking for the smallest multiple of 3 that 2 is going to go into evenly. So for example, our multiples of 3 are 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, etc. So if I take 3 times 1, I'm going to get 3. But 2 doesn't go evenly into 3, so that one's not going to work. What about 3 times 2? Well, if I do 3 times 2, I get 6. 2 goes into 6 evenly, it goes in 3 times, so 6 is going to be my least common multiple. So with 6 in mind, I need to figure out what I have to multiply by both of my denominators to get 6. In order to get 6, I have to multiply 3 by 2, because 3 times 2 is 6. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. If I do 3 times 2, I'm going to get 6 in my denominator, which is what I want. But I can't just multiply the denominator by 2. I'm also going to have to multiply the numerator by 2. So once I figure out what this number is going to be, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by that number. Now in order to get 6 over here, I have to multiply 2 by 3, right? 2 times 3 will give me 6. But again, I can't just do the denominator, I also have to do the numerator. Now I'm going to do my multiplication straight across. I'm going to say 2 times 1, I'm going to say 2 times 3. Over here I'm going to say 1 times 3 and 2 times 3. That's how we multiply fractions. So 2 times 1 is going to give me 2. 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. So this fraction here becomes 2 over 6. Then I'm adding to that. 1 times 3 gives me 3. In the denominator, 2 times 3 gives me 6. Now notice that I have two different fractions, but the denominators are both 6, which is what we wanted. We wanted a common denominator or denominators that were equal. Once we have equal denominators, then we can go ahead and do the addition. So when we do the addition, we add our numerators together. 2 plus 3 is going to be 5, and we keep the same denominator. We don't add the denominators. We don't say 6 plus 6 is 12. We just keep the same denominator. So this becomes 5 over 6. Let's do another example here. I have 8 over 10 minus 1 over 5. I want to find a common denominator or denominators that are going to be equal to each other. These are pretty small numbers, so I'm going to use my lowest common multiple technique that I used in the first example. When I use that technique, I want to look for the larger of these two numbers. So 10 and 5, I have 10 and 5. 10 is larger, so I'm going to focus on 10. I want to look at the multiples of 10, and I'm going to start with 10 times 1. So if I say 10 times 1, I get 10. Obviously 10 goes into that evenly, it always will. 5 also goes into that evenly. 5 goes into 10 two times. So I just have to multiply this fraction here by 2 over 2. If I do 5 times 2, I'm going to get 10, but I also have to multiply the numerator. So I multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. I don't have to multiply this fraction by anything because the denominator is already 10 and my common denominator is going to be 10. So now I'm just going to get 8 over 10, that's going to stay the same minus 1 times 2 gives me 2, 5 times 2 gives me 10. Now I can do my subtraction. I subtract my numerator, so 8 minus 2 gives me 6. I keep the common denominator that I already found, and I get 10 in the denominator. So now you could say my final answer is 6 over 10. However, this fraction isn't in lowest terms. We always need to make sure that our final answer is in lowest terms, and what that means is that both the numerator and the denominator don't have a common factor other than 1. In this case, I can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2. If I divide the numerator by 2 and I divide the denominator by 2, in other words, they have a common factor of 2, I get 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now my fraction is in lowest terms because 5 and 3 don't have any common factors other than 1. And of course that makes sense because both of them are prime numbers. 
Let's look at our last example here. We're going to do this one slightly differently. The reason is because in the first two examples, we had fairly small numbers for our denominators. We had 3 and 2, we had 10 and 5. Those are small enough numbers that we can just look at the larger one, look at its multiples, and find the smallest multiple that the other denominator will go into evenly. But here we have 40 and 65, and finding the multiples of 65 could be a little bit difficult. So instead, we're going to use a prime factorization method. We're going to look at 40 and 65 and factor them into their primes. So if I say 40, I know 40 is 10 times 4. I know 10 is 5 times 2, and I know 4 is 2 times 2. These are all prime numbers, so I know I'm done. Let's look at 65. We know 65 is 5 times 13. 5 and 13 are both prime numbers, so we know that we're done. Now what we want to do is build the lowest common multiple from these factors. And here's how we do that. We have to look at the different numbers we have. So we have factors of 2, we have factors of 5, and we have factors of 13. There's only three different numbers, 2, 5, and 13. Then we need to look at how many of each factor we have. So if we start with 2, we say we have 3 factors of 2 over here, we have no factors of 2 over here. You have to take the larger number of factors, so we have to take all 3 of the factors of 2. So we're going to take 2 times 2 times 2. If we had had over here 2 factors of 2 with 65, we would have had 2 factors over here and 3 over here. Because 3 is larger than 2, we would have had to take all 3 of them. We couldn't just take 2. So then we look at our factors of 5. We had 1 factor of 5 over here and 1 factor of 5 over here. Those are equal, so we just have to take the 1 factor of 5. Over here we have a factor of 13. We don't have 1 over here, but because we've got 1, we have to take 1. Now we multiply all these values together. That'll give us the least common multiple of 40 and 65, which will be our common denominator. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40, and 40 times 13 will give us 520. So 520 will be our common denominator. Now if we take 520 and we divide it by 40, we get 13. That means that we have to multiply this first fraction by 13 over 13 in order to get 520 in the denominator. 13 times 40 is 520. If we take 520 and we divide it by 65, we get 8. So if we multiply this fraction by 8 over 8, then we'll get 65 times 8 or 520 in the denominator. And now we'll have a common denominator of 520. Now we just do our multiplication. So we say 13 times 17 will give us 221. We know 13 times 40 is 520, our common denominator. Then we say 23 times 8, which will give us 160 and 24, or 184. And we know our common denominator is going to be 520. 65 times 8 gives us 520. So you can see now with this common denominator, we just add the numerators together. So 221 plus 184 is 405, so we get 405 and then our common denominator of 520. Now we just need to make sure our fraction is in lowest terms. We can see right away that both 405 and 520 are going to be divisible by 5. So if we divide 405 by 5, we're going to get 81. If we divide 520 by 5, we're going to get 104. Since 81 and 104 don't have any common factor other than 1, we know our fraction is in lowest terms, and that'll be our final answer.